Uh, why don't we get started? Welcome back, everybody. Uh, today we're going to be talking about grid stat and then um, the MetPlus grid to grid uh, use cases. And um, uh, so we're go going to dive right in. Um, first off, we have the, um, the, just the general refresher about the tools themselves, um, the MET tools. Uh, so um, we have a, a, quite a few tools that are uh, um, designed to be able to uh, be strung together using scripting. Um, so each one of the tools has a, a, a small um, subset of capability that, um, is, that they have um, focused on. So um, we've already gone over um, tools like PCP Combine and GenVX Mask and Plot Data Plane. And um, today we're going to actually start talking about some of the statistical tools, primarily um, grid stats. So um, just a, also a reminder, MetPlus, which um, is the, the overarching framework, um, is a suite of Python um, wrappers that um, basically replaces the need to, to write your own scripting. Um, it provides low level workflow um, for passing data from one um, tool to another and from one component of MetPlus to another as well. It passes the data, um, uh, uh, it allows you to specify um, the range of dates over which you want to compute the statistics, um, the, the types of fields that you want to evaluate, um, you know, the number of masks you want to apply, um, just remembering back to GenVX mask and generating uh, masking regions. Um, it uh, allows you to, um, specify the file naming convention for your um, forecast files, your uh, uh, observation files or analyses, um, your uh, climatologies and so forth. And then it um, also uh, allows you to um, specify all the other configuration options in each one of the MET tools. Um, so today um, what we're going to be talking about is um, uh, in some of the examples, uh, when we do the hands-on, we'll, we'll be um, using data that uh, would have been passed through PCP Combine um, and then gets passed into the grid stat tools. And, and so MetPlus are, is the Python wrappers that, um, uh, you know, kind of brings all that, that data flow together. So let's focus in on um, the, the grid stat tool itself to begin with. Um, basically, grid stat um, compares a gridded forecast field to a gridded observation or analyses. Um, and that, and, um, and it, those two have to be on the same grid. Whether those are put on the same grid outside of the tool or inside the tool, um, you know, that, that can be a user's um, choice. And I'll show you how you can um, do automated regridding um, within the tool itself. It accumulates matched pair. Um, uh, over a defined area at a uh, specific point in time and um, at, at, you know, a specific valid time. And then what it does is it, um, it goes through and, and um, does that for each valid time that you um, are interested in looking at. And then there are tools after the fact um, to, uh, to either summarize that data, compute means and, and so forth, or aggregate them in a, um, a more precise manner. Uh, you can verify one or more variables and levels. And as I said before, there's analysis tools that um, do the aggregation through time after all the match pairs have been um, generated. So uh, here's just an example of, of a forecast field and, and possibly analysis field. Um, in this case, it's uh, stage four data. And um, uh, verification methods include continuous statistics. Um, we can compute both single or multi-category um, categorical statistics. Um, there is the ability to compute confidence intervals um, on the data as it's being um, calculated at each given valid time, as well as um, in the, the analysis um, tools. Um, we can compute um, partial sums of, of raw fields in order to store um, some of the, um, the primary components of each one of the, um, especially continuous statistics that are computed. There's methods for um, probabilistic verification. 
Um, we have neighborhood verification methods um, to you know, look uh, around a set of, of grid points. And then um, to help with medium range weather um, and sub-seasonal to seasonal um, evaluation, uh, we do have the ability to apply a Fourier decomposition to the fields in order to be able to do scale separation and look for um, where the, the um, predictions are, are skillful um, from a spatial perspective. Uh, so we have um, the ability to read GRIB1 and GRIB2 uh, data. Um, generally, that's um, generated through post-processing of, of the native domains, um, as well as uh, CF-compliant NetCDF um, files, um, either generated by MET um, tools. Um, we can uh, read the WARF interp file, um, and as I said, uh, or else CF-compliant um, NetCDF data. And then we, we do have a Python interface called Python Embedding, which allows um, for reading of file formats that are, do not fit into the, um, those three categories of GRIB1, GRIB2, and, and that CDF. Um, so that you know, allows uh, um, GridStat to be able to read in um, you know, files that uh, are not necessarily um, something that, that is a, a standard format, um, it also allows for um, the derivation of additional um, file uh, fields um, that are not in standard model output. Uh, we use the ASCII configuration file um, in order to um, be able to tell GridStat what all of the configuration options that we're selecting at, um, at runtime. So for output files, we um, have a, a .stat file, which um, has all the, the statistics output in it. Um, and then optionally, um, you can have those um, statistics written out by line type, and I'll go over what line types are in just a little bit. Um, but you can have those, uh, those uh, statistics that are associated with a given line type um, written out to a .txt format. Um, and then uh, the um, NetCDF, uh, there's a NetCDF match pair file that can also be requested if you um, desire having the, the, um, the forecast um, values, the OBS values, and the difference values for additional post-processing. Here's a, just a, how, um, how you would call the tool. So you would um, type in grid underscore um, stat um, you would pass in the, the specific forecast file, the specific um, OBS or analysis file, um, and then the, the configuration file, um, as well as, you know, uh, if you um, want to specify the output directory um, and so forth, you can do that. Um, and logging, um, you can specify different versions of, of the logging, different levels of the logging in order to be able to see what's going on in the tool. So here's an example of um, calling GridStat. Um, so you can see here we're passing in a sample um, forecast file and an OBS file. Um, the config file um, has the GRIB code associated with accumulated preset um, for 24-hour um, accumulation. And then um, we're passing the, the data to an out directory and verbosity level two, which is um, pretty, pretty default. It gives you some information, but not um, you know, really detailed information. So if, if um, we had typed that in on the command line, then this is what it would look like um, while it's running. Um, so you can see that it's telling you what um, files it's, it's reading in, that it's computing a, a bunch of different statistics, that it's processing the, um, the field, and then it's um, also computing neighborhood statistics. And then these are all the output um, files that are, are written. Um, the, all the statistics are gathered together in this .stat file. And then um, being we uh, asked for a lot of different types of, of statistics, um, and we asked for those to be written out into separate files, those are also listed. And then we did um, have the flag turned on to be able to get the, the um, match pair net CDF file as well. So, um, Let's talk about getting uh, the data onto a common grid. Many times um, your forecasts um, and your analyses are not on the same grid um, unless you're using the analysis from your forecast system. And so you have to, to um, be able to get those onto the same projection. Um, and uh, 
in uh, GridStat, um, we have um, a several uh, uh, options that you can do this. You could do it outside of the MET tools um, using um, parts of the unified post processor, which is supported to the community um, here in the US um, right now through the developmental testbed center, but soon over like the next year, it'll be transitioning over to the new EPIC project. Um, and you could be uh, looking at copy GB using that um, particular um, a tool for this. So um, in, the, in this case, if you, if you ran copy GB, then you would wind up having um, your uh, stage four analyses um, written to the same projection as what is on the model forecast. But we also have automated regridding within um, MET itself. Um, there's a specific tool that you can use for regridding, um, or you can do it um, on the fly. So the, the tool, if you only need to, um, you know, regrid, um, you know, once and kind of have it be a static um, file that you'd use over and over again, then um, you would use the regrid data plane tool. And then um, we also have the automated regridding, um, which is uh, called within the, the configuration file. Um, we have the, uh, you can specify whether you want the um, grid to be um, everything regridded to the forecast um, grid or to the OBS grid or to a um, different um, user defined grid. Um, and then what type of um, interpolation you would like to use. We have 15, 15 different types of interpolation. Um, in this case, the budget method um, is good for things like precipitation where um, you have mass and you want to make sure that you maintain that, um, the, the uh, balance of, of the mass field um, itself. So if, if we wanted to regrid to the forecast field, you would put in here FCST. Um, and if, you, if we were to um, want to regrid to the OBS field, um, we would put in OBS. Um, and then this is uh, what it would look like if you were regridding to the forecast or the OBS um, or to a separate um, uh, grid. Um, could you just stand by for one second, please? Okay, sorry about that. Um, okay, so then we also have automated regridding of masks. Um, so if you um, have generated a, a mask using GenVX mask, um, but you would like to um, apply it to a, a different domain, then um, you know we do have the ability to, to um, do that as well. Um, and here's just an example of um, you know what a mask, the Alaska mask might look like on grid 104 versus um, grid 223. Okay, um, and then uh, just diving into the configuration just a little bit, there is a, there are a whole host of options um, for uh, the GridStat um, tool uh, because we wanna have it be as flexible as possible. Um, so you can define the forecast field and the OBS field to be um, you know, totally different fields. Um, you can have the forecast field be in a, in a GRIB format and the, um, the OBS field be in a net CDF file format, which um, you can see here. Um, so uh, say for instance, the, the GRIB input is accum accumulated precip, um, a 24 hour accumulation. And then we have here this cat thresh. What that does is it shows um, the, it tells the tool which thresholds we want to use for um, categorical statistics or um, other event-based statistics like um, you know, probabilities or um, for, uh, neighborhood methods and so forth. Um, it, here is uh, a specification for um, a NetCDF file format. The reason why I know it's NetCDF is because of the level. Um, we're using the parentheses and then star comma star to show the dimensionality of the, the data. Um, and then similarly, we have um, 
the definition of the events within the, the observation field. You could have um, situations where um, your OBS field is scaled differently than your forecast field, but you still want to be able to compare them directly. Um, and, and so you can handle that by, by having different thresholds, um, if it makes sense. For example, precipitable water and integrated water vapor um, are basically the same fields, but they are scaled um, by a factor of 10. And so you can handle that, those differences um, with the, the different cat threshes for both forecast and OBS. And then in this case, um, we're um, specifying that we not only want to evaluate on the full domain, but also um, to uh, um, use a, a polyline mask for looking at just the eastern part of the United States. And then we're also um, wanting to compute some neighborhood statistics. So looking in an area around um, a particular grid point, um, so looking at a three by three box as specified by the SWIFT 3, as well as a 5x5 five five box. And then at the bottom of the config file, um, there is the opportunity to, um, to specify um, the output um, line types that you would like, in other words, the types of statistics that you would like to, um, to compute. Um, and I'll go over these in just a second as to, you know, what all these acronyms mean and, and what they um, generate, but um, there are, are lots of different options, including categorical statistics, um, continuous statistics, probabilistic um, statistics, and neighborhood um, statistics. And then um, if you want to write out the NetCDF um, file, uh, you can specify um, what you have in um, the NetCDF file, including, you know, just the basic information Clearly, if you're, if you're um, printing out the NetCDF file, you'll want the latitude and longitude, um, but you can also get the raw fields, um, the difference field. If you have a climatology that you're passing in, you can um, have that um, written out to that NetCDF file as well. Um, and then it, um, some of the other um, aspects of, of um, neighborhood methods and, and Fourier decomposition and, and the gradient um, computations for the S1 statistic um, and so forth. So there's lots of flexibility there. Um, <clears throat> just wanted to, to uh, touch base on, on GRIB1 and GRIB2 um, file formats, uh, or excuse me, the, the naming conventions for the, the field names and the levels. So um, typically GRIB1 and GRIB2 have very specific naming conventions. For example, TMP is temperature, APCP is accumulated precip, and so forth, um, and and those specifications of um, you know what the acronyms or the the um, the abbreviations are um, can be found in this table, um, and then uh, the, they have a, a few types of um, levels, um, and and those are specified by a one letter. Um, uh, indicator. So we have accumulation is A. Um, so that's usually used for things like precipitation or, or fields that can be accumulated. Um, we have pressure levels, um, which start with P. So P500 would be, um, you know, 500 millibars. Or if there's a layer, it would be like P500 to 600. Z um, speaks towards uh, the vertical levels, like uh, 2 meter temperature or 10 meter winds. Um, or 80 meter uh, winds for um, you know renewable energy and so so forth. So that would be Z. If it's just a, a generic level, um, then it has an L in front of it. Um, so things like precipitable water um, would probably um, just have an L zero because it's a it's an integrated field and so it doesn't really have a specific level attached to it. And then if you want to um, have uh, read a specific grid record, if you're struggling with getting um, the, the, uh, the field out um, and, and read into MetPlus uh, Met properly, then you, you might be able to use um, the R and then the record number in order to be able to pull out the, the specific field. Um, for grid and net CDF files, um, you, need, uh, you need to understand what the, the uh, field name is, and that um, can be, a, you know, whatever the, the name is. 
And then um, you need to understand the dimensionality of your data and know um, where you would like to, you know, whether it's um, in like the um, dimension one, two, or three, or, or so forth. So um, if you have, uh, for example, accumulated precip and it's latitude and longitude, so all you have is, is um, you know, uh, geo references, then um, you can uh, just pass in, um, you know, star comma star. But say, for instance, you have um, data that's stored with um, four different dimensions. Um, in this case, the example is time and um, number of, of uh, grid levels, and then, um, you know, uh, sense of latitudes and longitudes. Um, in this case, it's the example um, from P and Chirp then um, you would want to specify that you want, um, you know, the, the time um, to, to be like the first time record. Um, and then uh, at the, the surface at level zero, um, and then you want the full domain of um, latitudes and longitudes. And then um, you want to, to pull out the second level and the third level. Um, so hopefully, uh, or the, uh, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so um, there are, as I said, there are lots of different line types and, that are written out to ASCII. Um, we have uh, contingency table counts and, and statistics. So those are the ones that are computed um, for an event um, where, you have thing, where you have information about whether um, there, there were hits or misses or, or false alarms or correct nulls. Um, and so there are four different line types that, um, that uh, keep track of those counts and, and com compute the statistics. Um, FHO and CTC are basically the same. Um, CTC uh, has all four categories, hits, misses, false alarms, and, and correct nulls, whereas um, uh, FHO is, is just um, uh, hits, misses, and, and um, false alarms. So um, forecast hits and observations. Uh, CTS is the, the full um, suite of categorical categorical statistics that can be computed. Um, if you want to know what those statistics are, um, please uh, refer to the MET user's guide um, to, to see the whole list of statistics, as well as Appendix C in the MET user's guide, which um, defines the, how each um, statistic is computed. And then ECLV is the economic cost loss um, value um, statistic that is uh, more um, applicable to probabilistic uh, uh, fields. Um, so then we have multi-threshold uh, cat category statistics, um, and so there's uh, several statistics that are computed. Say, for instance, if you have low, medium, and high clouds, um, and you want to um, compute statistics for all, all three of those different um, levels. Um, we have uh, continuous statistics for um, fields that are more continuous in nature things like temperature and wind and pressure and, and so forth, as well as the, the partial sums, which are basically the components of the continuous statistics, similar to the um, contingency table counts for the categorical statistics. Um, we do have specific um, output line types um, for wind vectors, um, as well as the partial sums associated with um, those vectors. Um, and then uh, probabilistic um, statistics are, are um, all of those line types are generally um, referenced by starting with a P in the, um, the line type. Um, and uh, once again, without um, diving too deeply into that, this at, that, at this point, um, I'll point you to the MET user's guide to understand um, where your favorite probabilistic um, statistic is in, in the line types, you know, reliability and rock and um, and uh, Breyer score and, and the decomposition of that and so forth. Um, and then neighborhood statistics. Um, uh, once again, there's uh, continuous and um, categorical statistics that are available for looking in, in um, a neighborhood. Uh, the gradient line um, is a, a component of computing the S1 score, which is uh, one of the, the scores that is um, uh, part of the WMO um, uh, uh, CBS um, scores that need to be reported. And then we have at the beginning of each one of the um, output, ASCII outputs, 
um, 22 um, common header columns that have all the metadata that are associated with those statistics, um, things like um, initial initialization time and valid time and um, you know what threshold is that's associated with the statistic and so forth. So there's a, a whole bunch of metadata that um, is included in the, the ASCII output um, that will help with um, trying to stratify the data and, and um, compute the, um, the scores for um, what is user, what is relevant to the user. Um, and then just to, to give you a sense of uh, if you have um, some of the flags turned on for the, um, the output um, and you say, say that you would like to have um, uh, uh, continuous statistics, multi-categorical um, statistics, um, and then the, the partial line type, uh, partial sums for the continuous statistics. Um, and uh, so you would have um, two lines each for that, um, for the full and eastern region. Um, and then you have uh, um, two regions and two thresholds for your categorical statistics. And um, you would have, um, for neighborhood, you would have um, two regions, two, um, two thresholds, and, and two neighborhood sizes. So you, you wind up having a lot of um, information that is um, output um, from GridStat. Here's an example of the NetCDF match pair um, data. So you have, um, uh, in this case, the way we had it turned on, we wanted the, the full raw field. Um, and because we had uh, we have both the the masking of full and east, um, it's both are written out to the um, out to the the NetCDF file, um, unless you request it not to be written out, and in which case it would just write out the full field. So here's the analysis or the OBS for full and east, and then here's the difference. And so you can apply the um, the mask, um, you can say apply mask equals false, and then all you would have is the full domain. Um, I already talked a little bit about comparing different fields. Here's another example of um, comparing integrated water vapor as a forecast field and precipitable water as the OBS field. They're both integrated, so they're both at level zero, but um, because they are scaled differently, then you handle the, um, the scaling, you can handle the scaling. Um, through the, the thresholding aspect of things. Um, we do have data smoothing. So um, if uh, you wanted to um, do some smoothing to the field before you compute statistics, you could do that. Um, you would do that um, in the interp um, dictionary of, of information. Um, you would uh, specify the method, um, you know, the field, that you would like to have um, uh, smoothed um, the method and uh, what shape you would like to, um, to use. And so here's an example of the two meter temperature for the high resolution um, rapid refresh. Um, and then if you took the mean in a 11 by 11 grid box neighborhood, um, you can see that it's smoothed a little bit. And then if you used, a, a, um, if you're computing the max within the, a circle of radius of um, a diameter um, 11, then um, you would see that you have a, a slightly different smoothed field. And just going backwards, this is um, what it looks like as the original. And I'm sorry that there's, there's a lot of information here, but I just wanted to give you a, a breadth of, um, of uh, knowledge of, of what all is available within GridStat. So just talking about neighborhoods, we've talked about the neighborhood methods. Say for instance, you have in a neighborhood of five grid boxes um, by five grid boxes, um, and you um, specify your event, your threshold that you want to, to look for. And there are four grid boxes um, where that event um, occurred. In other words, the, the value exceeded your threshold. Um, and then uh, the neighborhood methods, what that does is it, it actually um, would uh, take those as, as the events and then um, uh, compute fractional proportions. So if you were just looking in, in the neighborhood of, of one of your own, of the original grid box, you would have um, uh, one event within that, that um, uh, neighborhood. 
Um, and, and so that would um, be used, you could use that for computing statistics. If you looked in the three by three neighborhood, you would only have one um, event within nine grid boxes, and so your proportion is, is much lower. Um, if you looked in the five by five um, neighborhood, then you would have four out of 25. So your proportion is higher than in three by three. Um, and uh, this is, is how the neighborhood methods would be um, specified. So there's neighborhood, um, and then you specify the, the different widths. Um, and this is uh, it's specifying whether you have, uh, you know, how, um, how, how many, uh, the, the um, coverage of the field um, in order to, to make sure that the neighborhood is, is being computed properly. And you can either use a uh, square or a circle. So here's an here's examples of um, what the the fraction skill score, which is the statistic um, that's typically computed for the neighborhood methods, um, that, how it varies, um, and what the the um, forecast and analysis field looks like um, with those different neighborhoods. Um, I mentioned for a decomposition, here's just an example of um, how you would set that is um, you would go to the Fourier um, uh, dictionary uh, in the config file, and then you could specify um, what, uh, or, uh, what wave numbers are included um, in, your, um, in your field. So this is the full field. This is wave numbers zero through three, four through nine, um, 10 through 20, and so forth. And then now you have, now that you have these, um, the full field decomposed into these different wave numbers, now you can um, uh, compute statistics for um, these particular um, fields as well. Uh, for those that um, are uh, looking at global verification, you may want to do grid box weighting. Um, we have uh, two options. There's the cosine latitude weighting um, which um, uses the cosine of the, the grid point latitude. Um, and that's, that, that weighting um, looks like this. Um, so you have a uh, greater weighting as you get closer to the tropics. And then there's area weighting, which is um, the true area of the grid boxes. So that might be an option that you're interested in. Um, if you need to do data conversion, um, say, for instance, you are in the United States and your users are used to looking at things in terms of um, uh, Fahrenheit or in terms of inches rather than Kelvin or Celsius, um, you can um, uh, uh, specify a conversion um, uh, within the, the config file. Um, so you can, can um, be outputting your um, statistics in the um, user relevant um, units rather than in you know, the model base units. And then we also have the ability to censor data. You may have an, a, a situation where you know that wind speeds um, you know, that are really low are not reliable and you don't necessarily want to compute the statistics for you know, something that's a light and variable wind, say like less than um, four miles per hour or something like that. Um, or you um, may be interested in only a, um, a particular aspect of, of the forecast, say um, uh, reflectivity. Um, you're you're uh, only interested in looking at um, how well uh, the model is performing with um, simulating reflectivity greater than 35 dBZ. So something, you know, a little bit more extreme, but you still want to compute um, continuous statistics. Um, you can use um, uh, sensor thresh to specify a threshold, and then um, sensor val is telling um, grid stats what to replace that value with. Um, and so in this case, you would be replacing um, all, of your, all of your data um, that's less than 35 dBZ with a, a value of zero. In this example, we're looking at two meter temperature and um, we have said that um, uh, anything less than 280 um, degrees Kelvin, uh, we should replace with um, the missing value um, specifier for MET, which is minus 999. So um, 
you can now see that that all you would have uh, available for your your um, computation of statistics is where the the values are greater than 280 Kelvin. Um, and then climatology data. Um, we'll probably go into climatology data a little bit more in, in depth um, in one of our sessions. I just wanted to touch on the fact that um, we do have the ability um, to have you specify um, the, the climatology um, file that you would like to, to use um, and how, how to do the regridding because many times your climatology is not on the same grid as um, your forecast and analyses. Um, and if there needs to be some time interpolation, um, say for instance, they're, they're monthly um, uh, files, but you're doing a daily um, evaluation, you might need to be doing some kind of time interpolation. And so we have that um, available as well. Um, and then I'm not, once again, not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but for um, bin climatologies, um, uh, we do have the ability to, to take in a, a climatology mean and standard deviation and derive bins from that, if that is um, a, a method of, of using climatologies that um, your uh, organization uses. Um, and once again, I'll refer you to the MET user's guide um, to do more reading about that. So in the interest of time, um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, open up for the last 20 minutes um, uh, rather than running the, the grid um, stat tool itself, we're going to kind of jump right into using um, MET Plus to show you um, just how to use um, the MET Plus uh, uh, framework to run grid stats. Um, so I'm, I'm going to um, turn this over to, uh, to Tina Kelb to, to um, jump into a hands-on session for the next 20, 20 minutes. Um, but I also just wanted to point out to you that, that um, as part of the PowerPoint here, I do have some very basic information about where you can go and, and get information about um, running the tools, including um, just very basic wrappers around the tools like um, grid stat basic use case, um, and then examples of how to run grid stat, say for instance, computing anomaly correlations and so forth. And then um, just some basic information about um, how the, um, the uh, configuration files transfer over into, um, you know, into being useful um, in the MET tools. And uh, Tina's going to go over this, but I, I wanted to have some background information for people to refer to as well. So that's in um, this PowerPoint. And I am going to open this up to um, Tina, and we'll see if there's any, John HG or, or John O, are there any immediate questions that we need to answer before Tina jumps into the hands-on portion? Uh, we've been clear in the discussions. discussions. Okay, then I will hand it over to Tina. Thanks. All right, thanks, Tara. Right, thanks, Tara. Um, so I'm going to be doing the hands-on session, and uh, as she said, we're going to be running um, MET plus use cases this time rather than MET, which is what we were running in the previous hands-on session. So like before, uh, you're going to need to be logged into, if you want to follow along, you're going to need to be logged into um, your um, the machine that you've been running this on. Let me see. Okay, here it goes. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, so I think you can see uh, where I'm typing now. If you can't, let me know. Um, and I've put in the chat a link to uh, these instructions in case anybody wants to follow along with that. So just as a reminder, you'll want to source, and, and I've already done this, but um, I need to go to my MET Plus 4.0.0 tutorial directory. And then you'll want to source your um, tutorial setup.sh before starting if you haven't already done that. And then we'll be um, ready to go. So I'm going to start off with a grid stat, a use case that utilizes the MET grid stat use tool. So before we run it, let's uh, take a look at an example of what's in the grid stat file. So I'm going to go to this file, 
which is Matt Plus. And and if I'm um, if I'm going too fast, please uh, speak up or say something. We're going to catch him Matt Plus. Build base. Parm. Use cases. Met tool wrapper. Uh, grid stat. And then there should be a gridstat.conf file in here, which we're going to take a look at. So um, at the top of the file is the process list or the process that we want to run, which is gridstat. Um, and then in this case, we're looping by initialization time by one initialization time because the beginning and the ending are the same. Um, although if we were doing more, it would be a 12 hour increment. And then one lead time sequence, which is 12 hours. So if I continue down a little bit further, some other important information in the file is uh, the variable name and level. So in this case, it's precipitation for the forecast. And, and the level that we're using is a three hourly accumulation. This is from a GRIB file. In the thresholds for categorical statistics, uh, you need a threshold. So in this case, there's four of them, greater than 12.7, 25, 50.8, 76.2. Um, and then observations is the same variable, but this is coming from a, a NetCDF file because of the level and three hour um, precipitation. So if we were, you know, these would relate to if you were in a MET configuration file and you were giving a forecast field name, APCP level 03, and an, or an OBS um, uh, field uh, name and level of the same thing. And then going down a little bit further, um, we can take a look at the pass. So in this case, um, here's our directories containing the input to GridStat. And you notice the input base in here. So this is set in that tutorial.conf file that we ran. Um, it, I don't think we touched it the last couple weeks, but um, we ran it the first week and we set it up. So pass and GridStat can reference other um, options that are defined in a configuration file um, depending on, you know, um, where it's defined. Um, so, and then lastly, we have down at the bottom a, a mask template. So, with that, we're ready to try running this. Um, so, let's make sure I'm in the correct directory. And to run a MET plus use case, uh, if you recall back from the example wrapper use case that we ran. Um, I'm always typing run metplus.py and then I'm giving it this configuration file that I just used. So I'm going to copy and paste, give it this configuration file. And then I also want to give it my tutorial configuration file, which I am in the, direct, the same directory as tutorial.conf. So I'm going to put it there. And then one other thing that I can do is I can change some of the MET configurations on the command line rather than in the MET plus configuration file. And obviously, if I'm doing this a lot, it, it gets really tedious. But if I just want one, uh, this can be useful. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my output base by using this config.output base equals and then I'm going to set it to the MET plus tutorial. Or, uh, I spelled that wrong. Um, there should be output. Um, well, doesn't like this, but we're just going to do output. The, it, this should just be the directory that I'm in. Um, so I'm going to cut and paste because I'm, or not, because I'm having typos. Um, I'll put, and then grid stat. And then with that, I should be ready to just hit the button and run it. And hopefully it works. Um, okay, so it doesn't like me trying to override the tutorial there. So I'm going to leave this just tutorial.conf. 
and let it write to where it wants to. Okay, now um, my, use, my use case has run uh, successfully. So we know it ran successfully because of this bottom line that says Mutplus has, run, has successfully finished running. Um, so let's take a look at what came out of this. So I'm going to take a look at this output area, which should be um, ah, copy paste is not working like I thought, but I apologize. Uh, let me fix this. Okay. That post tutorial their output. And then there should be a grid stat, met tool wrapper. And then inside that is grid stat, and another grid stat, and it looks like there's a date directory. So in this case, there's three files. So an ECLV line, a grad line, and a dot stat file. Um, so the economic cost loss value, which is which is this one, um, and the, the gradient value, in this case, we were writing both a stat file and a text file. And we can look at some of the commands in grid stat wrapped to see why we got the output that we got. I go down. Um, oh, that's right. It's set in the output flag, flag dictionary now. So I look back at my um, I look back at my gridstat.com file, which is up here somewhere. Um, gridstat.com. I'll just copy paste that. Um, and then I go down to where um, our flag is set. So um, what you can see is for the contingency table statistics and the um, continue, uh, uh, we're, we're writing just the stat line um, versus the grid stat output flag for the economic cost loss and the gradient, we're writing both. So if I look in some of these files, I would notice that the stat file contains all four of those lines. So this, the, um, all four of those lines. So the economic cost loss and the gradient, and then um, also the other two. Let me take a look in here. Yeah, so you can see the um, all the different, and I'm not gonna uh, go down and uh, go across all the lines, but the stat file output contains multiple lines. So you can see there's our, there's my different CTC, CTS, CLV, um, four different, um, thresholds. So I've got the three files, but in the one case, only two of my uh, cost loss are, are separate. So with that, let's, <clears throat> excuse me, let's go and um, review the log output. So the log output should be in a similar directory as where we wrote our data. So um, it should be in our Met Plus tutorials or output grid stat logs. So I'll search here. Yeah, there it is. There's the one. And so I'll actually use less. Since that's what's being used. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this log file to see what was inside of it. And I have an extra. All right, this is not one of I did it twice. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll do that. So this is kind of what the Met Plus, Met Plus log output file looks like. And so you get uh, configuration info that's printed, um, but then you also get output. So these, this output here with the debug, debug two um, is output from the actual running of Gridstat, whereas the stuff above it is information and configurations from uh, the Met Plus. Um, use case. So um, that was just an example of one use case. And we have some additional exercises that we can do here uh, in the, the practical session.
So we're going to see, it looks like we still have some time. So we'll see if we can go through um, some of them. So if I click on to the next page, uh, if you're following along with the online tutorial session guide, it says, if you have extra time, you may want to try these additional met exercises. And I'm not going to do all of the Gen VX mask um, ones at the top, um, but we'll go ahead and uh, go down and do, uh, I'll leave those, I'll leave the three samples at the top for you, but we'll go down and run um, a model application use case. So what we were previously running was in the Met tool wrapper use case, but there are other model applications. So if I do a listing on that directory, um, which is in my Met plus build base Parm. So going back to the use cases directory, and then previously where we were in this Met tool wrapper, but now I'm going to move over to model applications. Um, and you can see there's a, uh, a number of options in this directory. So these are um, use cases that we've set up uh, that deal with different, you know, they're sorted by um, both their area, so like space weather and marine and coastal tropical cyclones, but also by their size, so like medium range convection allowing uh, climate. Um, and so let's take a look at one of these. Let's pick one in the medium range directory. So we'll use those model applications here. Then we'll go into medium range. And then grid stat, forecast GFS, OBS GFS, climo. Um, dot com. So um, much or similar to the previous uh, configuration file, this one is running grid stat, but it's also running stat analysis as a second process list. Um, in this case, we're running by valid time instead of initialization time up at the top here. And then if I go down and look at my variables, this is set differently from the previous run that we did. So in the previous run, we had a forecast variable and an obs variable. But if your variables are the same, uh, named the same in your forecast and your obs, you can use both. So both var1 means my forecast and my observations are both called temperature, both called um, U, v, U grid, V grid, uh, mean sea level pressure. And in this case, I'm doing a combination of four fields, but there's the first three, there's three different pressure levels, 850, 500, 250. So that works out to be nine variables. And then I have a uh, mean sea level pressure. So in this case, we're verifying a total of actually uh, 10 fields. So, um, if I come out of this, we can go ahead and run Met Plus on this, much like we did run metplus.py. And I'm going to give it this configuration file that I just used. And then I'm going to give it the tutorial.conf, which is in the directory that I'm looking at. Um, and let's try, okay, let's try one more time specifying this config output base. See if it works for me this time. So going to give it that plus tutorial dir output um, grid that underscore climo. All right, that looks um, So this one's going to take, since it's processing more variables, it's going to take a little bit longer to run and it appears. OK, good, we're, we're going. Um, and once it finishes, we can inspect the output. Um, so there's all my runs. So, all right, 
Um, Cheyenne seems to be moving a little bit slow. I apologize for this. Um, all right, yay, it finished. Okay, so then we can take a look at the output, which should be at my Met Plus tutorial dir. output. And so there's the two of them. So grid sat is what I ran the first time and grid sat climo is what I just ran. Um, and I've got, you know, my logs, my metplusfinal.conf. If I wanted to, I could take a look at the metplus tutorial der climo. Whoops. That's I don't want to. Okay. Um, and view my metplusfinal.com. And this just kind of lists the final configurations that were set for GridStat. So you can check in here if, if something goes awry and see um, perhaps what's going, what's gone wrong. So let's try to, it looks like I might be able to squeak one more in if I do it fast. We'll see. Um, which is adding relative humidity to grid stat. So what I'm first going to do is copy this file from the model applications directory to my own user directory, which is this user config that I'm in. And then I can go into user config, um, whoops, and open this grid stat at rh.conf. Um, and so if I want to add RH, I will add it as a level down here, both their five name equals RH, both their five levels equals, which levels are we doing? Um, 250 and 500, so we'll do P500. P250. And that should be all I need to add a variable to this configuration file. Um, so then I can try running it again with my run netplus.py. Um, and in this case, I'm in the user. Why do we not like this? Okay, well, it doesn't like the full path. So I'm just going to cut and paste and give this. Copy. I'm just about out of time. And then I'm going to give it my, I guess it would be up one tutorial.conf. And then here I'll give it an output base at RH. Um, and, and it's starting. Um, and I should be able to see, yeah, so there's my, there's my RH listed in my observation field and up higher in my um, my model field. So I don't have time to check, but um, uh, you guys can go in and check the um, output log file to verify that um, RH has been added to this new directory. So I'll go ahead and stop there. Um, are there any questions? On any of that? Looks like we're, we're uh, having um, some people dropping off. Um, while people are thinking about whether they want to ask a question or not, uh, I'd like to point out that um, one uh, homework would be to go through the online tutorial and run the, the grid stats um, just the standalone grid stat uh, tutorial, just so you can kind of see how it works without the, the MET Plus wrappers. Um, and then I think you'll find that the MET Plus wrappers make it a lot easier um, to run. And then uh, also a heads up, we will be sending out a, um, a survey uh, to get a sense of how well we're doing with um, the trainings, um, if we're going too fast, too slow. And then um, once we get through the basic um, tools, uh, what we should focus in on next. So um, 
John, oh, I don't know if you want to just throw that into the, the chat right now. Um, yep, I'm dropping that. that right now. Perfect. And um, we'll be repeating this uh, on uh, January 4th. You're welcome to, to join again. Maybe you'll get some additional information out of it. Um, come back, ask questions, and so forth. And, uh, and then we'll pick up with looking at um, Met Plus more in depth on um, January 11th. So thanks for doing the hands-on, Tina. And uh, for those who celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody. So see you in the new year. Thank you.